Anyway, back on. God dang it, get a quick shifter. Like pow, 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 and smooth, smooth, and very, very comfortable. Like go. <laughs> Roadie tires, very gnarly terrain over here. A lot of bumps, a lot of. I just, I just have to. This light should go on if they were in my dead corner. Haha, <laughs> look at that! They were in my blind spot. I don't see them right now. They were in blind spot though. <laughs> Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to yet another video. And I mean, look at my garage at this point. We have my beloved 1290 Adventure R with a set of new tires. And over here we have, I still have to clean up the garage. I'm very sorry about that. We have the brand new Ducati Multistrada V4 Rally with road tires. Why? 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 Big bummer on that. Doesn't really matter. But I mean, you have to look at this monster. How beautiful does this look? This is just Italiano Designo Perfecto Mante, eh? Perfecto Manto. Anyway, without any further ado, I'm going to tell you guys all about the motorcycle once we get on and once we get going. <laughs> Can't get back here. <clears throat> anyway, let's do this. And just like that, we are in sport mode. And of course, the traction control is hopping in on and off and on and off because... Of course, I'm doing some off-roading with street tires on the 27,890 euro motorcycle with road tires. Mm, might not be the best of ideas. Anyway, I'm just here to make a cool drone shot. That is actually all. Farmer's Town, ladies and gentlemen. Farmer's Town, we gotta be a little bit careful here. That is very friendly, my sir. Hello. So yeah, 20 years of multistrading. <laughs> 20 years of multistrading, and this is the result right now, 2023 Multistrada Rally. And I gotta say, sorry Ducati, if you're watching this, but the first generation, maybe in the day it looked good, but if you look at it right now, it's like, that is one skinny ass touring motorcycle. 170 horsepower and 125 hey 170 horsepower i have no idea what that is 170 horsepower 125 newton meters of torque now i do have road tires on it it is my first ducati that i actually got from ducati to test out for a week so i can't really drop it road tires going off road but i mean i've not taken this for a long route but i do feel how stable it is and i'm pretty sure i can keep it hard and i i mean uh, i can keep it up that's what she said <laughs> These are some, yeah, I gotta stand up just a little bit. Roadie tires, very gnarly terrain over here. A lot of bumps, a lot of bumps, a lot of sliding over here. But I do am confident that I do not have to worry because the traction, wait, it's not in enduro mode. I still have it in touring. Anyway, I'm just gonna leave it in touring because, oh, there's like big rocks in here. Because I do have a feeling that this bike is goddamn stable. I mean, it's not a Desert X. I might be on the wrong motorcycle for doing this. This is a lot of going up and a lot of going down. Just gonna stand up here for a second. But I mean, I'm off-roading a 270 kilogram motorcycle. Whee! On mm, road tires, just going off-road. I mean, and this is what these motorcycles are made for. I can just go onto the highway, do like four or 500 kilometers on the highway, get off, take a little dirt road like this. I mean, normally I've seen the advertisements of this motorcycle and they have put like a knobby tire on it. Now I have like a 100% hardcore road tire on it. But even with that, it doesn't even mind it doesn't even mind the suspension it's got like 200 millimeter suspension uh suspension travel in the front and 200 millimeter in the rear so if you're going to flat that out ooh, 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 there's like big logs in there even if you're going to flat that out you're probably crashing or you're probably jumping like 10 meters high i don't know but i mean it is all possible look at that it doesn't really it doesn't care one bit uh, can't drop it smoky can't drop it ducati's first motorcycle not real sure if ducati's going to like this but i mean and that is the cool part about these big engine motorcycles. You have 170 horsepower. Of course, you do not even need 100. In enduro mode, it's got like 100 horsepower. You don't even need that. You just need like 60. That's, that's, that's probably the max you need off-road. But I mean, you can absolutely do that. And that is what's so fun about these motorcycles. You can take them off-road. You can take them on a highway. You can travel with them. You can do like anything with them. 
without besides getting stuck you cannot get stuck with it or you probably have to camp out and that <laughs> where the hell that one came from okay so uh and yeah that was kind of dangerous anyway back on god dang it gotta be gotta be kidding me yeah that was a fail uh should have put it in newer mode anyway the quick shifter <laughs> I mean, it's like pow, 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 and smooth, smooth, and very, very comfortable, like, very comfortable. Uh, cannot compare this with my KTM 1290, I'm not going to compare it too much, but, I mean, this Ducati is like top-notch. The suspension, it's got like this active automated suspension, and it keeps, it keeps working all the time and makes sure that my tush is very comfortable at all times. Holy cow, that thing is that thing is ridiculous fast. Now on this Ducati Rally, we actually have a 19-inch wheel in the front and 18 in the back. We do not have a 21-inch wheel as some of the adventure models because, you know, the bigger you go, the harder it gets to handle on the road. And with this 19-inch in the front, you still have the fun of swirling from left to right like that, even with a lot of weight and a big bike. So the 19-inch, it's pretty decent. Now I just stopped here on a little parking lot just to, I mean, I, I, just, I just have to... You can actually hear the intake sucking up birds and sucking up bees just to get out of this Acropovic Ducati performance exhaust. I mean, I really like this. The more throttle you give it, the louder it becomes. Absolutely love it. Now, just a little talk about the seating height. The standard seating height is actually 870 to 890 millimeters. You can adjust this over here and in the back. I tried it before, it works absolutely fine. But they also have eight centimeters in optional seats and optional stuff that you can actually lower the seat. So it goes from 825 millimeters to 905. That's made for like freaking giants. Anyway, let's continue. Oh yeah. Now everybody knows that this bike is a little bit on the higher priced side, but that's also because it comes with a lot of electronics. You got like the DSS, the Ducati uh, Skyhook suspension, and that actually regulates automatically my riding suspension, so my, my, my comfort. So actually when I'm riding on a bumpy road, it actually figures out what the best suspension is to keep me in great comfort. Now that is a friendly bike. I do have a thirst. Might have to stop for a drink. No smoky, motorcycle reviews. We have to make some motorcycle reviews. Are they barbecuing over there? God dang it. Ah, oh, oh God dang it. So we have radar detection in the front, radar detection in the back. And we also have like the dead quarter uh, flashing indicators. So if you, I thought I heard a horn. So if you're on a highway and there's like a car into your blind spot, a motorcycle always has a blind spot. So you can actually see over there, you can see over there, but you can't really see over there. And if there's a car in that position, this light will get a little bit of a orangey. So we have to go on highway soon and just test it out because we also have to test like the wind and this windscreen that you can fold up like that very easily. Look at that. <laughs> That's so easy. So we have to test this out. Radar detection, radar detection with cruise control, automatic cruise control. Not that important. Not a lot of people actually use cruise control, but you have it. You can actually fall asleep and just end up in Italy waking up. It will just follow the car in front of you. If that car in front of you is actually going to Europe, I mean. I'm really sorry, I had to get like a little drink. I was so thirsty talking to you guys. God dang it, sorry about that. Uh, let's continue. Oh man, this thing is so easy to ride. <laughs> now we're going to get it out of touring mode and we're going back into sport mode because you know, sport mode is like, I like it a little bit sporty. So everything is actually controlled with this little joystick. They made like a little joystick here. It's actually pretty simple to use. Close the throttle and boom, it's in sport. Now, the amount of settings you can change into this bike is absolutely nuts. So for most you have like sport, sport, touring, enduro, urban, sport, touring, um, enduro, urban. That's all you get. But I mean, you can actually go inside of your normal settings menu and then adjust every setting inside of your, let's say, your sport mode. So you can adjust your front suspension, rear suspension, Ducati wheelie control, DWC, it's called Ducati wheelie control, your ABS, how hard your engine has to brake. I mean, I have never seen a motorcycle with that many options, with that many options that you can actually program them in advance. And the cool part is, 
Now I have to be careful with Sport because they also got the BSD off and, and whatnot. It also have the Ducati wheelie control. Yeah, it's the uh, Ducati wheelie control. And I actually set it to be off in Sport mode. Now the fun fact on this motorcycle is when you actually turn it off, uh, adaptive cruise control. No, sorry, sorry, I pressed, ah, I pressed the wrong button. No, go back. So when you actually set it up, one time and one time only into sport mode that everything should be off and really control should be off it stays off even if you have left it in the garage for overnight it doesn't even matter ducati really control it is off you see that even if it's you got like the ebc you can control the ebc the preload front suspension rear suspension ducati really control you can even control the, the dtc the ducati traction control how much power it should have the ducati really control you can can control like every single thing inside of every single mode that's like that's like a freakish thousand settings or something uh, and it's easy to use i do have to say it is easy to use i'm kind of a dumb guy so everything that is easy to use i absolutely like yeah now when it comes to wheelies i mean 170 horsepower of course it can do wheelies not a problem whatsoever but now the main question remains can it do third gear 90 kilometer an hour wheelies as I can do with my uh, 1290 KTM and uh, I, did, I mean it is fast but it's like 90 a little clutch action now like this clutch does work a little bit different as my KTM and that is probably the reason why this thing does not go up in third gear at 90 kilometers an hour it does have the power for it it might lack a little bit or less of torque because the KTM is like 143 Nm the Multistrada has 125 it's got a little bit more horsepower but if you want to do some wheelies at higher speeds you know you need a little bit of torque now more torque also equals more damage inside the bike and more like mm, fraction as I can call it like that I'm not an engineer I'm just saying like I know it so this bike also has 60,000 kilometer valve tension intervals so I mean for the big maintenance costs yeah it can take a long time before you actually have to go I can't really crash it <laughs> yeah that's a uh, second gear third gear fourth gear really on the Multistrada um, I like it I like it this is like I mean if I would have to ride to Italy right now and do some roads and some bendies and not too much off-road maybe just a little bit I would absolutely absolutely i'm really sorry ktm but i would take this motorcycle above my ktm and above the bmw gs because i mean the gs is absolutely perfect do not get me wrong but the ducati for some reason it gives me a little bit more of that oh yeah well you mean you know that the australians always say like that oh yeah can i get a oh yeah oh yeah it gives me a little bit more of a youth of a younger feeling the gs is absolutely perfect the bmw gs is like very smooth very comfortable to ride absolutely nothing wrong with it and you can actually really compare it you can compare it really it's like really close to this one but this one is still a little bit more <laughs> yeah i mean i mean it has a lot more horsepower as the bmw gs and it makes it a little bit more nutty that's all i can say about it smooth comfortable yeah my ktm is more the raw the raw version of these boat these bikes and if you want a little bit more comfort, if you want a little bit more smoothness, this is the way to go. If you want absolutely to be perfect, nothing crazy about it, take the gist. And if you want to be a really crazy loco as me and still want to have a lot of horsepower pull wheelies in third gear doing like 100 km an hour, yeah, you need the Super Adventure. <laughs> but this thing is an absolute rocket, a smooth rocket. Smooth criminal. Oh, God dang it. Now a little fun fact, of course, this bike comes standard at 27,890 euros in Belgium. Now it does have a couple of funny facts, like for example, the button on top of here is actually the heated grips. You do get the button, but it does not mean you actually get the heated grips. <laughs> you still have to pay for getting heated grips. But of course, if you buy a touring bike, you need heated grips. Maybe not that heated tush, because the V4 cylinder, well, actually you do need a heated tush. Now back in the day, uh, with other motorcycles, when you do not have a v4 engine and not have heated heated cylinders in the back you would be opting for like a heated seat because you're standing at a stoplight i mean the cylinders do keep your tush and your putsy a little bit hot now with this bike what this bike actually does with the new v4 gran turismo engine it actually stalls the rear cylinders also not in sport but if you're going into touring and you're just revving it like this just cruising it 
the rear cylinders were just turned off. Better efficiency, lower fuel costs, but also no heated tish, no heated tush, no heated poopsie. So yeah, I would <laughs> sport mode with everything off. Absolutely bonkers. So uh, with that said, yeah, you kind of need the heated seat. Better for the economy, right? And also you got to pay for the uh, heated grips. On to the highway we go. Now, I don't really like doing highways because I do believe they are very, very boring. But we need to test out how bad and how good the wind actually is. So screen up to just start with. Oh, I do want to do a, a, a faster launch. Maybe I just have to... Oh no, no, get out of my way, get out of my way. Oh, oh no, oh no. Be careful with the pothole, Smokey. Whee! I also have to say cornering. Ha. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This thing is... <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta say, I got a little bit of a smile, a little bit of a smile. Come on, stay a little bit behind. So I can show you guys the actual the actual speed going on the highway. Third gear and go. <laughs> yep, that's 170 horsepower right there. And that's what gives me that extra little boost. Now, anyway, doing 120 kilometers an hour, a little bit of wind on top of my arms. Uh, that is easy fixable by taking these a little bit higher like that. There you go, the wind is already... Nah, it's still a little bit windy. Oh, six gear, okay. Let's do about 140-ish. This is like the top speed you can get uh, without losing your license. Chest, nothing, helmet, absolutely nothing. There's like no wind here. The wind starts about here, so it's absolutely perfect. A little bit on my arms, but it's not even noticeable. Yeah, I mean, doing 130, 140, absolutely perfect. Let's put this thing down. My helmet just got 20% more noise. And the noise is gone. Yep. Approved by Smokey. Wait, there's a Starbucks over there. Should I go to a Starbucks? It's not a BMW GS, people. I'm not riding from bus Starbucks to Starbucks. <laughs> nah, that's just a meme. That's just a meme. I did like the GS. Can't complain about it. We we'll do have to test the cruise control. Wait, uh, on. And then probably up. Oh yeah, I've got to do it like that. So I should be not crashing. The cruise control is at 114. Those are doing 90. So I should not be crashing into that. Look at that. It's even holding back. And if I'm correct, and actually some bus or something else passes me, this light should go on if they were in my dead corner. <laughs> Look at that. They were in my blind spot. I don't see them right now. They were in blind spot though. So the light works. The active cruise control with the radar system also works. Let's see, there's not a car coming. Also is the orange. Yep, it's going on. So I know there's a car right there in my blind spot. Now that is helpful. Now I do, I do would prefer to pay a little bit more extra for that. That is very interesting. God dang it. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, this, it's growing on me. It's, it's kind of growing on me. <laughs> That's what she said. Just like that, we go off the highway. We put that down again, go back three gears and... Whee! But anyway, that is that for today's video. Really hope you guys liked this uh, Multistrada Spooky V4S review. Make sure you like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what do you think of it, of this motorcycle. Do you like it? Do you like the BMW GS more? Or do you actually like the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R more? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you, much. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, drive safe. See ya. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see my latest video, it is right over here. If you want to see my most favorite video, it is right over there. Subscribing is done over here. And if you want to become a full-time YouTuber, as you can see by my play buttons yourself, go to smokytube.com. And over there, I have the perfect all-in-one how-to YouTube course. Yeah.